I think they have the right idea. Wave to our friends in Cambodia. This is why we bought the trooper, for these kind of roads. Hello everyone, this is Javier, and you're watching Retire Recharge Realm. Welcome to the channel. Today we're in Champasak, and this is fifth in our series of videos on a road trip to southern Lao. I'm checking out this humongous tree that was next to our guest house. Pretty cool, before the sun comes up. So our trip today is going to be from Champasak to Don Papeng, which is a pretty famous waterfall in Sipondon, or the archipelago of islands in southern Lao. Then we're going to go to the Cambodian border before we make our way over to Don Kong or the Kong Island, which I believe is the largest of the 4,000 islands. And then finally we're going to make our drive out to uh, Atapu, where we get into a little bit of trouble. So please join us for the adventure today. Alright folks, we're just finishing up in Chepasak. We went to the Wat Pu Festival yesterday, last night. It was pretty amazing. Got the video here. See the traditional dancing and uh, some of the Khmer history and the Lao history. It was also very crowded, pretty dusty. So I think we left at a good time, but yeah, it was quite the sight. Lapu and this whole area, uh, I believe Chepasak is a World Heritage Site uh, in Watbu. So it's yeah, a pretty amazing place to come. I'd say a day is probably good enough to see most of the most of what you're gonna see here. We came in yesterday, spent the day and last night, yeah, it was definitely well worth the visit down here. Now you can see we're walking back up to the guest house that we stayed at. Agenda, the view. Highly recommend this place. Quiet, lots of rooms, but it's pretty quiet. So we had a good time staying here. And again, I think our rooms were 400,000, 450,000 kip, so about $20 a night. So we're gonna come back, come back up, and I'm gonna sit on the river and get a nice view of the sunrise. Oh yeah, it's quiet. Everybody's still asleep. Nice cool breeze in the morning. I'm gonna sit here by the water. Right on the Mekong River. The sunrise was incredible. So if you can tell, way in the distance, there was a fisherman's boat just crossing over on the water and the reflection of the sun. This time of the morning, 6 or 6.30 is when all the fishermen get out to get an early start on their fishing for the day. There's the water buffalo. Taking it easy in the water. I think they have the right idea. We should all be cooling off. Oof, I made it. It's only a couple hours, but I was ready to get out and take a break. So here we are, Kon Papeng Waterfall. Stop here and grab some lunch. And then we'll go to the Lao-Cambodia border. Little shops, yeah, they've built it up quite a bit than the last time we were here almost 10 years ago.
260 meters to the waterfall. I don't see all uh, this before. Let's take a check the map here. See where we are. These must be all the waterfalls around Dundet. Okay. So before, when we were here, 10 years ago, you could drive straight up and park right up, or pretty darn close to the waterfall. Now they have what this is called the VIP parking, I guess. And then they have the standard entrance that where we parked and walked through the shops. So it's changed a little bit since the last time we were here. Let's go see if we can find the waterfall. Yeah, it's nice up here. Yeah. Look at that view. On the way out of the waterfall, when we were going to the border, we spotted what we thought was hornet's nest. So what do you do when you see hornet's nest? Well, you try and get a little bit closer and take a look. What is it? Ant oh, that's an ant nest. That's not a hornet nest. No. Oh, I thought that was a hornet nest. They do? Yeah. Or the big ones? Guys, we made it to the southern border of Laos and Cambodia. This is as far south as you can go. The last time we were here was back in 2015. We had a trip to Cambodia with Angkor Wat. We were in Siem Reap and then came back across the border. On this side, it was quite the journey. We walked across the border with their suitcases in hand and then phone sister picked us up and then we made the drive all the way back up to Vien Xian. so all the way back up it was that was quite the trip I was glad for that one to be done it was hot dusty road the road's so much better all the way down here. So we'll stop and wave to our friends in Cambodia and then we'll keep going on our way. Next stop will be Duncon Island and we're going to try and spend, get a place there to spend the night. Okay, so an hour later we made our way to Duncon or Kong Island. This is the largest of the islands in the 4,000 island archipelago in southern Laos. And I believe the only one where you can drive across in a vehicle using the land bridge. As usual, we didn't have a guest house booked, so we got across, took in the nice waterfront view, and looked for a guest house. So this one worked out. This one is called the Don Cohen Guest House. Pretty affordable, and the other guest houses are pretty much right in the same area on the same street a nice waterfront view and I think most of them have little restaurants. This one was pretty basic lodging so toilet and shower kind of a combination setup which is pretty typical in uh, Southeast Asia with the hot water unit there mounted to the wall and then the one bedroom and air conditioner set up. 150,000 mile kit for about seven dollars so that's all we needed for the night. After we got checked in, we took a drive around the island and we were surprised by the level of infrastructure in terms of concrete and asphalt roads and electricity. The island set up pretty well. So it's a sleepy little town. I think these girls were surprised to see us drive by on the bridge. Uh, 
scenic, quiet, laid back. Yeah, we really enjoy the island. And after driving pretty much around the entire island, we made it back to the main village area and found what looked like the palm sugar market. So there's a lot of different products. And of course, we had to stop, take a look. Is it good? Yeah. Good one? That's soft? Yeah, that is soft one. This is a little bit hard one. Oh, okay. I don't like like that. So she's going to do the fresh one for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, so we're going to try some of this palm fruit that we picked up out on Kong Island. So we'll show you what it looks like right out of the seed. You can see that. So that's before being peeled. After it's been peeled, it looks like this. I think it looks kind of like a lychee, but Fawn doesn't agree. It's transparent, and I guess it's got juice on the inside, so we're gonna try it. It's like one of those um, uh, balls from the uh, bubble tea. It tastes like boba. That's yeah. what it tastes like. It's like a big jelly ball like boba. from boba tea. Yeah, like a boba. <laughs> yeah. Back up on the main road, so we'll take a walk through town. Washing, 30,000 kip per kilo. Now we know. Come back here and get our laundry done next time. Another hand scratching away. Here. You can believe it, this bus crossed that bridge just walked over. That bridge is stronger than it looks. Beautiful sunrise. We got mother goat with her kids crossing the bridge. Yeah, and that was a nice relaxing stay on Kong Island. Little did we know that we would have much rest soon after that. Got back on the road and we saw someone with a long rifle on a motorbike in front of us, so you never know what you're going to see on the road. Alright, we're just a few kilometers from our turnoff, headed to Sanamsai from Bangkok. And 
ran across this durian farm. I don't know if it's very common for durian to grow in Laos, so I thought this was pretty interesting. Most of the durian that we hear of comes from Thailand or Malaysia. But we got a small durian farm here. Don't see any fruit on it yet. I'm sure we would see it, or at least smell the durian. So this must still be a younger farm that's just been started. Okay, we're on our way. On our way to Samam Sai. So what we didn't know was that the particular route we were taking from Tangbang to Atapuro was not the recommended way to go. And in fact, on some maps, there's a big X on this route because it is not only very difficult, but it is almost impossible to cross during some times of the year. We would find this out very soon. Stay tuned for next week's video to see what kind of trouble we did get into on this road to Atapu and how we get out of it. As always, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and we will see you in the next video.